What's up guys, I'm Squishy, and welcome to the premiere episode of Surviving the Storm. BlizzCon 2013 has just concluded, and during it we saw our first live matches of the game, and got to playtest Heroes of the Storm itself on the show floor. This video will give you a brief overview of the game's systems, and more in-depth coverage will come in future videos. So since Heroes of the Storm has just been announced, some of you may be asking what it is. Blizzard has referred to Heroes as a hero brawler by Blizzard, though it is very similar to existing MOBAs like League of Legends, Dota 2, and Han. Players are able to control a hero from all Blizzard universes in a world called the Nexus. For example, Raynor can brawl against Arthas, or Diablo can battle alongside Tyrael. However, there are some major changes to this game that will make this game easier to pick up and learn. The most notable is that Heroes is more objective based, and engaging with those objectives will cause many more skirmishes and a shorter game, typically averaging around 15 to 20 minutes according to internal testing by the developers. First up, there are no items, item shop, or gold in this game. And since there's no gold, there is no last hitting mechanic. Even more, any EXP gained is split evenly through the entire team, and thus your entire team will always be the exact same level. Now these may seem like drastic changes at first glance, but due to how maps are set up, more skirmishes will occur near objectives, which results in a quicker game. Heroes of the Storm is more objective based than other MOBAs, and team positioning and communication for each objective will be very important. Skirmishes happen very often, to make sure to control the jungle camps, map specific objectives, and watchtowers. Let's take the time to look at the map for a Heroes game. The dev team has described four total maps so far, and each will have an in-depth coverage in a future video. These are the Haunted Mines, Blackheart's Bay, Dragonshire, and the Cursed Hollow. Each map has the blue team on the west side of the map, and the red team on the east. As with similar games, the map is symmetrical on both sides. There are only two lanes, and each lane contains three forts for each team. Forts act as forward bases for each team, consisting of two gate turrets and a gate to prevent enemy movement, a healing fountain, and a castle with a guard tower. The healing fountain heals both health and mana for friendly nearby players, and the castle spawns minions that will march down the lane. Note that compared to other MOBAs, the towers have significantly reduced health and will be destroyed much quicker. Additionally, towers have a secondary resource of ammo that will slowly regenerate over time. Once a tower is out of ammo, a tower cannot fire. And all structures in a fort can be damaged and destroyed by the enemy team. Another important objective on the map are watchtowers. These watchtowers function very similar to the watchtowers in StarCraft II. After outnumbering your opponents on the watchtower capture pad and capturing the tower, you'll be granted a large area of vision, including inside bushes. The last thing to talk about are the mercenary camps. These are found inside the jungle of all maps, and each camp consists of a different type of enemy. When defeated, you can capture the nearby point and you will be granted team XP and send the monsters that you just killed down the nearest lane. A recommended level is shown near the camp to provide an estimate of the level that players can start soloing the camp. There are many different types of camps and each have a unique strength. Camps will spawn 5 minutes after they are killed. Some examples include large siege golems who attack from range, a camp of a three knights and a caster, and a large grave golem. I mentioned earlier that there was one objective that differs depending on which map you play. I won't go into too much detail on it, but stay tuned for my next video which will take an in-depth look into these map specific objectives. So first up, we saw the devs play the map Blackheart Bay at BlizzCon. On this map, Two treasure chests will drop coins and will spawn periodically throughout the map. Coins will also drop from jungle mobs. And the number of coins you are carrying is shown to all players. Upon giving 10 total coins to Blackheart for your team, he will fire 12 mortars at the enemy's forts, dealing massive damage 
and possibly destroying at least one fort. It will be important to try to control both Blackheart's area and the treasure chest locations on this map. Next, we saw the devs play the Haunted Mines map. This map has two levels and the mines will periodically open where the teams can enter the second level to collect a maximum total of 100 skulls. Once all 100 skulls have been collected by both teams, one grave golem will spawn for each team and slowly cause a destructive path towards the enemy base down a lane. The grave golem will have health and damage relative to the number of skulls collected. It will be important to collect at least 50 out of the total 100 skulls to at least match your enemy's grave golem. The next map is the Dragonshire, and this map has two obelisks, one near each lane. Capturing an obelisk takes time, and once a team controls both obelisks, one member of that team may enter the Dragon Shrine in the center to become a dragon, granting massive power and new abilities which include a Cone of Fire, a large range ally buff, and a charge that knocks players back. The last map we saw was the Cursed Hollow. Periodically throughout the game, tribute totems will spawn in random locations. After channeling on these totems for a couple seconds without taking damage, it will be captured for your team. After capturing three total totems, the Raven Lord will curse the opposing team, disabling all towers and weakening minions for a short period of time. The last thing to talk about is the character in-game. So in Heroes, stats are separated into a couple different categories, Attack, Defense, Ability, and Utility. Under attack, we have attack damage, attack speed, and DPS. Under defense, we have health, health regen, and shields. Ability consists of ability power, mana, and mana regen. And under utility, we have only movement speed. Most of these stats increase when you level up in game or through talents. Now, unlike other MOBAs, your Q, W, and E skills will all be unlocked when you start the match and you will gain your ultimate at level 10. Now, in Heroes, you will have the option of choosing between two ultimates, depending on which will be more beneficial to your current situation. Maybe you want an ultimate that will help you win teamfights, or maybe you would rather an ultimate that will allow you to travel across the map. So let's talk about customizing your character through talents. Starting at level 1, and approximately every 3 levels after, you unlock a new tier of talents. These talents can increase the damage or range of skills, increase your base statistics such as AP or AD, or anything in between. This will allow a player to customize their character to however they want, and still be able to try out weird builds such as an AP Demon Hunter. Additionally, at level 20, you will unlock a second ultimate ability. However, this ability is passive and some are shared between heroes. For example, Call of the Storm makes enemies explode upon death, dealing damage around them and grant a secondary effect such as mana, AP, or AD. An example of a specific level 20 passive is the Elite Torin Chieftain. He has a resurrect on death effect similar to Guardian Angel from League of Legends. Lastly, and most importantly, Blizzard announced the beta signups for Heroes of the Storm have gone live. Make sure to sign up at the link in the description below. Beta is estimated for the first half 2014, and judging by Hearthstone signups and beta, my personal estimate is around April. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and subscribe for more Heroes of the Storm videos and our video podcast about the game, Storming the Nexus where we discuss our opinions on the game and discuss new news that has come during the week.